it seems like I've made like a billion videos about how to use Python and physics, uh, but I'm starting over. Because someone said, oh, well, where do I start and, and where's a good like a tutorial through the whole thing? So I'm gonna make a tutorial on Python and physics for you. Um, okay, so who are you? Uh, I, I think you could be a physics student. I think you could be a physics faculty, a graduate student, uh, but someone that doesn't really know a lot about Python because I actually am not like a computer science expert, um, but I do I do know some of the basic stuff and you can really do it. And, and you really need to just play with this stuff. You can also be learning physics. I teach this kind of stuff for my students. Uh, and I think it is important for them to learn how to do it. Uh, and I think it helps them learn physics too. So I'm gonna assume that you know some basic physics. You know, I'm talking like uh, introductory level physics uh, you know, what's a vector, forces, momentum, energy, uh, stuff like that. So I'm just going to make a whole series. I'm going to put it all together. It's all going to be in a playlist, and hopefully you will find this useful. Okay, so one of the key things in with Python is breaking things into small steps. But we're not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to introduce you to Python uh, and running programs and all that stuff. And there's actually three there's three ways you could do this. Okay, so this is the the original way. This is uh, Glow, and I'll put links in, in the um, in the things down below. This is Glow Script v Python. So Python is a uh, I guess it's kind of like a lower level program language, but it's very easy to use and it's very flexible and it's very popular. Uh, this is technically not Python. This is uh, running in a web page. Uh, and it's actually, I think, technically transcoded JavaScript, but it looks like Python to you, okay? Um, and it runs pretty good. So there's also a whole bunch of stuff in here about visual uh, 3D, 3D animations, uh, but let me just show you this. So this is, if you create an account on, uh, this is glowscript.org, and I will include the link down below. Uh, so I can go down here and click um, create a program, and I'll give it a name this is for you. I have a ton of stuff on here because I, I was using this for a long time. Uh, and then so there's there's my program right there and I'm not gonna use this, okay. Uh, the other way, and this is the way I'm gonna use it, this is Trinket.io. I like Trinket.io, it actually uses GlowScript, it's identical to GlowScript, uh, but it, 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 there's two things that I like. Number one, it's easier for me to share the code because you don't have to log in to be able to, to edit and use this code. The other one you do. Okay, and I think you even have to copy the code and put it in your own thing to edit it. Number two, this one shows you um, code and output side by side. And number three, uh, oh, you can embed it in some things too, which I think is really cool. Uh, and it actually has a whole bunch of other stuff. You see it here, it has Python. I don't want to use that. It has Python 3 with the key next to it, which means that you can write Python 3, but you can't save it unless you have a paid account, so that's fine. Uh, Pi game R block storm about that HTML glow script that's one we want um, Java it has Java too but glow script I'm gonna hit glow script uh, and then also you can do uh, glow script v Python programming in this block method you know from like MIT scratch stuff or actual Python I don't like the blocks okay it's it's great for some stuff it's great to start but I like this so I'm gonna click that okay we're gonna use this and so here you have a, a input window and an output window which I like. Okay now I'm going to show you the third way. Uh, this is it. Okay so this is Jupyter Notebook. So this is actually running Python on my own computer. The The problem with this is that you would need to install something on your computer or have a local server running this that you could go to. So it looks like it's running in a web page but it's not. Um, so this isn't as user friendly but it's also more powerful because I can do things like this. Uh, from vpython import star run that cell it broken into cells and then i can change i can put a latex equation in here and uh, i mean i can put other bunch of stuff like this is a markdown cell and then run that and then you can just run different cells and stuff like that um, you can also import other stuff import oops that's not good import numpy as np um, import uh, mat plot lib dot pi plot I feel like I'm spelling that wrong as plt okay well that's fine and then so you can have all these modules that you can run you can do symbolic algebra you can do a whole bunch of stuff you can do 
3D plotting, contour plotting, some of the stuff you can't do in the other uh, in closed group view Python. So it's more powerful, but with great power comes a great responsibility. That was what Spider-Man's uncle said, Uncle Ben, but that's just a joke. So I'm not going to do it this way. Um, it's, it's more powerful, but also a lot more work. Okay, so I'm going back over here to uh, this. Okay, so this is GlowScript. I'm going to start off, and, and I'm going to assume you know, no, you've never made a computer program before. Ever. Ever. Okay, this is for you. Save. And we're not going to do anything crazy. Okay, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I haven't planned it out. So let's just run this uh, as we go along. So uh, the first thing you want to do is just, let's just print something. Because we can do calculations, but if you don't have, if you don't tell it to print out that number, then, then that's kind of not useless. So I'm just going to say print one. Now up here, the play button, I can click play, and it's going to run it. And look, it says one. Boom, just wrote our first program. Okay, yeah, some people would say hello world is the first thing you should do. Okay, let's do that. We can print a string. I can say quote, hello world, and then run that. And then we'll do that. Wait, it looks even better. Hello world, comma, watch this, two times four. I'm gonna put a space. So I kind of like this because you can include multiple things uh, together. I can use operations in there, two times four, and it returned, it processed two times four, uh, and it gave me eight, and I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so delete that. Now, what really makes uh, this powerful is oper uh, variables. So I'm going to say this, x equals <coughs> 1.2, y equals 2.4. I'm just making up these numbers off the top of my head, just like that, making up random numbers. Now let's print these things out. Let's do, uh, let's do this. Uh, C equals X times Y, print C equals C. Okay. Uh, and then if I change these variables, 1.1, and rerun it, it will give me a new value. So that's what's really nice about this. I can make complicated uh, equations, which X times Y is not a complicated equation. Uh, and, and I can even break it into parts, right? I can, I can do parts. Um, what about scientific notation? Let's do, let's calculate the, the gravitational force due to the Earth. And I'm trying to remember if I get the size. So I'm going to say this, G equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, so that's uh, scientific notation. Let's just print that out. G, and I guess I, should, I can do the units too. Uh, Newtons, and this is just a text. Meter squared per kilogram squared. I think that's the right units. There. So you see it prints it out just fine. Okay. Uh, let's say mass of the Earth is six times six point two four times. Is that right? Times ten to the twenty fourth uh, units. Uh, so if if I did this uh, kilograms, and I say print me, let's see what happens nothing and it actually go down here it's like i don't know what the heck you're doing okay because it can deal with numbers but can't deal with stuff like this so if you want to put the units in there you can but you have to put them in as a comment so in in glow script uh I, the hat the number sign makes it a comment so anything after that makes it a comment uh, i can i can make a line a comment like that too and then it printed that out okay so I don't want that commented, uh, and that works. The radius of the Earth, RE, is, I think, the, I think this is 5.99, 5.9, 5 5.9 times 10 to the 24th. And then this radius of the Earth is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 6th. And I'll put the units there, meters. Uh, a G. So now let's say that we're a height uh, of H equals... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six meters above the Earth, and let's calculate the gravitational field. So g this is this is an equation: g equals g times m e uh, divided by the radius squared. So it's going to be uh, r e plus h squared. So in this is one of the things that always gets people in Python. Uh, raised to the power is star star, not hat. 
print uh, g equals, I like to put the, the thing there, g uh, newtons per kilogram. Oh, newtons per kilogram. Okay, so, oh, that's not right. Okay, so I got one of the numbers wrong for the for the masses. It should be around less than 9.8, but that's fine. I think we're all good. Okay, so there's scientific notation, uh, powers. Uh, let's do a square root. So what if I want to do square roots? Um, let's see. Z equals the square root of uh, H squared plus RE squared, which doesn't even make sense. And then print Z equals Z. I don't even know what the units are because I made that up. Okay, so square root is SQRT. Uh, now, I, I do want to point out, if you were doing this in uh, Jupyter Notebooks, a square root's not built into Python. Uh, it's, a, it's a special function. But this, oh, this line up here, don't change that. You can change the version number up here, but you have to have this. Um, so GlowScript vPython has these special things already built into it. So you don't have to do that. Uh, it has things like pi too. So I can say print pi equals pi. Now I couldn't use pi for variable name because it's reserved. Square root is reserved, but it's already built in too. Okay. Uh, let's do some trig functions. Uh, let's say theta equals 30 times pi divided by 180. So there's a the default uh, setting for trig functions in Python, in GlowScript Python is in radians. So I just did 30 degrees. I converted it to radians. There is a way you can do it in radians, but don't worry about it. Let's say uh, f equals cosine of theta. See, you notice here how nice that is, right? Because I can have theta and then do a function cosine theta. I don't have to type in the number and then print uh, f equals cosine, or f, f. Okay, uh, you could do uh, arc cosine. Um, let me show you this because you need to know these functions. So if I go over, I think you can do it up here too. If I scroll up to the top, there was a help. It's here, oh here, maybe is that it? Yeah, so if I click that, I can go down here uh, that's stuff that we don't need, but if I click this, no, GlowScript help. Okay, well, let's just go to GlowScript. So if I go to GlowScript and click help, then this is really nice because here, work with 3D objects, math functions. These are all the math functions that you can use. Okay, and, and so they're all there. If you ever forget and it tells you how to use them, uh, those are the built-in math functions. Um, okay. I'm going back over here. Um, so I'm just showing you how this actually works great as a calculator. And I really do think it works well as a calculator. I like to use it as a calculator. I'm going to show you one more thing and then and then we'll stop. Um, and then we'll do we'll do a, a, my next one will be on uh, loops. Loops. Yeah. Okay, so uh, one of the great, great things about GlowScript is this. Watch this. A equals vector. 1, 2, negative, or negative 1, I'm making up, let's get rid of all that stuff. And now let's say print. Hey, you can't do this in Python, but you can do it in GlowScript. So vector operations are built into GlowScript. And this is super powerful. Uh, so I can do a whole bunch of things. Watch this. B equals vector. Um, I'm making up a vector. 0 0.3, uh, 4, 0. Now I can do print a plus b. I can add those vectors. I can do um, this. What's c equals a plus b? Print cx. The x component of that is equal to c dot x. Okay, so I already know the answer should be 1.3. Let's just check and make sure it works. Oh, I didn't put equals. So that does indeed work. Okay. So that's pretty cool. But wait, it gets better. Watch this. I can find the magnitude of that vector C. Print, let's put it like this, C, so it looks nice. And then in Python, again, if you if you look at the, in here, does it have, 
vectors vector operations so here's all the vector operations that you can do uh, I'll, I'll look at that but I do want to print out um, so I made it too big okay uh, the magnitude of the vector C is gonna be you can actually do this manually I could say square root uh, C dot X squared plus C dot Y squared plus C dot Z squared ah and I can run that and I get 6.22 now but I could also do this there's a built-in function for that I don't need to do it manually I can say mag C I get the same thing I can also print out a unit vector in the direction of of C. So let's say print C hat, not hate, equals uh, norm C. And I think you can use hat. Uh, they change that up, but I always, I, I, grew, I grew up in Python using norm. Um, so there's a unit vector right there. Uh, what if I try to do something like this? Let's say, um, oh, right, let me show you this. C equals three times a now you notice i've already made the vector the value c and now i'm making it something else python don't care that's that's your that's your business if you want to do something crazy that's that's your problem uh it don't mind c equals c let's oh this three times c so it's fine i'm gonna do it i don't really care what you want to do uh what if i want to do this uh let's just print C uh, A times B, and you'll notice down here cannot multiply a vector by a vector because you can't. But you can do the dot product. You can do this this the uh, the cross product. So I can actually do dot A comma B. That's a function. I can do the dot product of A and B. You can build this on your own. But there it did it. I can also do the cross product. Uh, print uh, cross A B. And that should return a vector. Okay, I'm trying to think anything else. Super, I, th I think this is a good introduction. You know, you can go around and just play around with this stuff, um, get familiar with Python. We're gonna do loops next, uh, but I want you to know where this stuff is and be comfortable manipulating it. I'm not even gonna give you this code because it's not even there to, to play with. That deleted half the stuff anyway. Uh, but I will include a link to Trinket.io, GlowScript. Uh, if you want to install Anaconda, uh, you can do this in Anaconda, uh, Jupyter, uh, but you will need to, the best way is to install Anaconda. Um, so I'll put that in there too. And I'll put a link to my playlist. There's going to be a playlist of uh, all these videos and we can work through it together. And I don't even know how long it's going to be because this is my first video. So I will make another video and I'll talk to you later.